Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 90 of Super Switch Heads, the premier Nintendo podcast on all of the internet. My name is David Howe. My name is Matthew Stoner. My name is Patrick Nisley. And boy, oh boy, we got a very special guest with you on this evening. Rob Steeman has joined the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Rob, hey, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, David. How are you? Good, good. It's very, very good to have you on on this this fine Tuesday evening that we're recording. And uh, we've got you on today because we're doing a whole episode on uh, the next generation of gaming. Uh, next Gen is here, folks. Next Gen is now current gen. Uh, we're going to talk all about our impressions of the launch of these new systems, um, kind of what we think about them so far. Uh, Rob, we know you got a you got a PS5. That's why you're on the show. Uh, none of us, uh, all, none of us poros uh, were able to afford one. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're all very rich. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then also we're going to talk a little bit about uh, just how we think uh, Nintendo will fit into. Um, this next generation of gaming kind of how Nintendo's sort of intergenerational. And we'll be talking a little bit about that on the show. We've also got lots of news. Uh, Hyrule warriors is coming out this week. So we've got some early reviews and uh, some leaks to be aware of animal crossing has an update coming up. Uh, new Lego Mario sets were announced uh, and lots of other news as well. We're going to run the gamut on news today, folks. How are we doing everybody? We, we having a, we having a good week. It's been a, I feel like it's been a while since I talked to you guys. <laughs> it's been, it's been crazy. Uh, uh, COVID cases are up uh, across yeah. the world. Uh, which, oh yeah, we which did it. Is America is the best. <laughs> yeah, We're if number, that was our goal, number one, yeah. we did it. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. Um, not to talk about COVID too much, but it's starting to hit my close circle. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah like yeah. Uh, people people you know have been infected. Uh, friends and their parents. Mm-hmm. Bummer, man. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. it's crazy. I think we're all about to be there because of of the the n- sheer numbers and the community spread and 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 thanksgiving and christmas and all that it's it's yeah. it's gonna get i i'm having the same sort of feelings i was having back in march where i feel like oh shit something's mm-hmm. about to happen <laughs> like something no. it feels yeah ah. totally yeah i mean it's we're you know i'm i'm in that we're i'm in that position now of like figuring out with my family like what we're doing it's true you know what i mean because it's like i usually go home for thanksgiving because it's right around my mom's birthday and then you know usually always go home for christmas so it's it's the untread water yeah. that we are waiting. So we'll see how it goes. How about you, Rob? Are you uh, concerned about the future of humanity? <laughs> I mean, just generally, yeah. Uh, <laughs> specifically during COVID, definitely. Um, we're in my house having some travel plans potentially be changed. Uh, For sure. Definitely reconsidering Thanksgiving and Christmas, but... I, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. The nice thing is my family's all in San Antonio, so plans can yeah. change on a dime and it's no problem. Well, if you don't catch COVID uh, or, or give COVID to your parents on you know, Thanksgiving or Christmas, you can give it to a whole crowd of people as you race for those Black Friday deals <laughs> uh, <laughs> coming up. So you'll have you'll have your opportunities. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Stay safe. Yeah. yeah. Order online. Yeah. Order for online. Uh, do, do Zoom stuff. Yeah, totally. It's it's all right. I don't want to make this all about this, but it's <laughs> it like, um, but like, I think I have also hit the point where of like, I've been doing really well. Like, I'm 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 an introvert. I don't mind being at home, like all this yeah, stuff. But I'm thriving. definitely not anymore. <laughs> like, I hit that wall. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of like, like ah, and I think you know, I was kind of like, oh, maybe maybe early next year things will start changing. Now it feels the opposite. Like, oh, now is when you really do need to hunker down, and maybe I yeah. should have done more earlier. Ah, oh well. Yeah, and you and and like, we're I think we're all like realizing right now that we're not done working from home anytime soon as well, and that's kind of it was always this arbitrary December right <laughs> time, but that didn't ever mean anything. Right, you know what I mean. So it's. It's existential. I like working from home. I just don't like working from home and then having a kid who's too young to take care of himself <laughs> at the same time. Fair. <laughs> that makes yes. it hard. Yeah. Uh, anyway. See, that's that's my cat for me. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my kid. All right. So. I play, I'm playing Pikmin with my cat. <laughs> <laughs> any, any last COVID thoughts? <laughs> we should move on, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and move on to, uh, to shout outs. 
Yeah, real real briefly, uh, Mr. Coconutty on, on Twitter. Nintendo, you can thank us that we may have made a sale for you. <laughs> Mr. Coconutty said they were iffy about picking up Pikmin, but after our last episode, we have convinced them to pick it up. So um, they tagged Nintendo of America and told them to give us a stipend, and we're still waiting. All right. Uh, I'll hit up uh, d Bows after this, <laughs> and see what he can do for us. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'd, we'd love to hear from you out there, listener, if you have any thoughts on today's episode, Next Gen, or, or anything, or any topic suggestions, or if you just want to go share our podcast or leave a review, please do so. Like and subscribe. And Reggie, if you're listening, ho- hook my dudes up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Re- Reggie's still definitely pulling the strings yeah. at Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. It's always been Reggie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll get into the news and rumors. Um, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, the new Zelda game, is releasing this week, this Friday, uh, uh, November. I almost said September. November 20th. Um, There haven't been, I I guess there must be an embargo here in the U.S. or something, or they haven't provided it. But Famitsu has given it a, a review score. And, you know, Famitsu does this like four different people score it. And they all gave it nines, which means it got a 36 out of 40, which is pretty good. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> means it's yeah. 90% as good as Nintendogs. <laughs> <laughs> Did that get a straight 40? <laughs> I'm mostly, I think that's the meme is that Nintendogs got a straight 40 from Famitsu. Oh, that's yeah. Great. That's great. I guess if you're the audience. Uh, yeah, Famitsu reviews can be kind of all over the place. Like I know they, they rated Sonic Forces like really highly. Um, and so it's. You know, and sometimes they they're a lot harsher on games than they are on others. But I think for the most part, if it's got all nines from Famitsu, you can at least uh, be ready for a pretty good time. I, um, do you guys play the demo any further? I haven't nope. touched the demo. I haven't played it at all. Rob, I haven't touched it, but it, I think this might be the first ever Muso game that I pick up. I didn't wasn't interested mm-hmm. in Fire Emblem Warriors. I wasn't interested in Hyrule Warriors. But man, give me that Breath of the Wild content. Yeah, you, me, and three or four li- of our guests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Half, there are a dozen oh. of us at least. Um, yeah. yeah, I did have a coworker uh, who I was talking to today who downloaded the demo, and he was like, "Have you played Hyrule Warriors? It's different from Breath of the Wild." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder how many people are just going to be like, "What the fuck is going yeah. on?" <laughs> yeah, I could see that. It was um, great. And then, Matthew, you pointed out the game is leaked, right? Yeah, uh, the game has leaked online um, from a Reddit comment. It says, oh, I don't want to see the spoilers, but I'm downloading it now. (laughs) Um, It's online. You can download it if you want to steal, but don't do that. Reggie, give us money. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But it's online, so be careful when you're browsing probably the Zelda subreddits or or all over the internet. I'm sure it'll start uh, leaking spoilers and having all the secret characters come out. Yeah. Data mining is already underway as far as I understand. So yeah, definitely avoid areas where you think that might be shown. What do you think compels a person to do that? Just go on Reddit. <laughs> this game isn't out yet. No one to ruin it for everybody. <laughs> That's a good I question. Yeah. Just out same, of nowhere. Uh, the same thing that would cause a reality star to run for president. <laughs> a bully? Um, inverted camera controls have been patched into Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Um, and that's the only other thing that was major that was patched in is GameCube controller support for Mario Sunshine. And we were speculating of why they may have taken so long to do this or why they announced it so early, hoping there was some other stuff coming along. But nope, that's all. That's what we got. Well, I mean, the GameCube controller support's pretty cool because it like it supports the like analog triggers. And I think for people who played it that way originally, that makes a lot of... Yeah, that's that, like that. that's huge. And it's not only, I think, I mean, definitely if you played it originally on the GameCube that way, it's going to be better for you to play that way just because it feels a lot more natural. But the game was like designed for the GameCube controller. You know, it like utilizes all the functions of the GameCube controller and like the two different spray mode settings being on two different buttons like might feel natural if that's the first way you've played it. But I really urge you, if even if you didn't play it on GameCube originally, try it out with the new mode because it utilizes the actual pr- pressure sensitivity uh, of the um, 
the right uh, shoulder button. And uh, yeah, it just makes the game a lot more playable. I'm, I'm this to me. This was a pretty big update. I'm, I'm very excited about it. I played some on GameCube, but I didn't own a GameCube. So it was just when I was at friend's house. Um, so the inverted camera doesn't really do a lot for me because playing it now, it controls like a any other third person game does. But that GameCube controller support, I spent probably an hour looking at different GameCube controllers and adapters and how to get that working because I'm very into the uh, analog triggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's nice. Uh, there, there are also like a couple like little bug patches, I think. Like um, there were a couple of things in at least Sunshine where they fixed some camera issues um, that had to do with the, the change to widescreen. And then those like kind of weird dev cubes that were in one of those stages, those have been removed. So it's more um, like the original uh, GameCube experience now. And there was a small update to Super Mario 35. Um, David, I, th- I think this was speaking of bug fixes, a lot of just bug fixes, right? But was there, was there like now you can unlock worlds or how does that work? Do you know? Like you can. The, so there, there, yeah. Well, so there's a new update coming. There's like a game mode coming, but, uh, or, or rather a new special battle. But uh, the, the patch fix that they made for Super Mario Brother 35. Super Mario Brothers 35 is, you know, that annoying sound that would happen when a shell would be caught in a one space <laughs> and it would go, they like fixed that apparently. <laughs> so the game is now finally playable, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very excited about that fix to Super Mario Brothers 35. That's true. I hadn't thought about that. Um, yeah. Have y'all won yeah. a round of that yet? Oh, yeah. I always get I won to- like 20 or 30. I always get to number 10 and then choke. <laughs> yeah. I've slowed down playing it, but I haven't won. <laughs> so. we, we have a, we have a whole tips and tricks episode for you to listen to Rob. That'll up your game. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get you the top five. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, it, it can guarantee you top five. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah. I have it. Yeah, I yeah. have it on audio now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll shout you out on the next episode if that happens. <laughs> and um, speaking of updates, animal crossing, they announced the, winter update the turkey day and toy day update for the game um there's some other cool stuff coming here uh that we have to talk about of course there is um some new reactions include you can sit finally which has been a funny thing in this game where you can't sit next to the villagers when they're sitting down without like a cushion but now you can and also they're adding new like hairstyles and um a lot of them are like um black hairstyles which is really cool there's like an afro mm. and like afro puffs and cool and um which was something yeah. that's kind of missing um some some culturally diverse um hairstyles so sitting down uh on the ground is huge <laughs> yeah it is. I don't know why, but like that well, was. Well, no, it's was like, like oh, yeah. I, I mean, I haven't really played that game in a while, but like my villagers would sit down like under a tree and I would always want to join them, but I would have to like yeah. lord over them by standing and it was always really awkward. <laughs> now I can be on their level. It's very nice. Hey, what, yeah. What, yeah, what exactly. you doing? Exactly. <laughs> just just are sitting. You re- are you reading a book? Cool. Can I read some? Are you leaving or are you, you, you know, <laughs> do you want a nice any, day out? Do you, do you want an apple? <laughs> are there even apples in that game? Oh, yeah. Probably not. There are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are. Um, it's been a while. And the other big uh, thing here is they finally have announced the save data transfer. You can finally, like, um, you know, transfer your island to another switch, um, mm. as well as a few other things going on with the game. So that's cool. Um, and then there was a study that came out while we're talking about Animal Crossing out of Oxford um, University, which uh, s- suggests that gaming is good for you. Um, this is like one of the first more rigorous, I guess you could say, <laughs> at least it's being cast as that way. Uh, academic studies into video games. You know, there's all these hot takes that video games are bad for you. We've got a whole episode about about studies that prove this and that from a while back um, Mm -hmm. kind of talking about our games, good or bad for you, but um, it's nice to see a well-respected institution do this and that the result is that generally uh, it's a, people are happier after they play animal crossing for a few hours or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I don't know, just the, also the, the person who did the the project kind of talks about, you know, doing more research into 
positives and negatives of video games and that kind of stuff with better standards and that kind of stuff with more, you know, just cool stuff. Check that out. Um, I would recommend. Um, it's nice to see news like that. Very much so. Uh, I think this is interesting. They announced some new Mario Lego sets. Um, they look cool. Lots of new Mario uh, enemies and Mario suits and that kind of stuff. Um, but what's interesting about this to me as somebody who follows Lego a little bit too is that, you know, this obviously means they either had this planned or it's selling well um, because mm. Lego definitely doesn't, um, you know, they're fine with doing a one and done license thing if it's not <laughs> if it's not um, selling super well. So this may well have been planned, um, but it's cool to see more of this. I see it kind of doing the the Labo thing where it's like everybody bought it at first. And they were like, oh, you want more Labo? And then like nobody bought those. And they were like, oh, oops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm exactly the opposite. I see this picture here of them putting the Lego Mario inside of the Tanuki suit. And I'm like, all right, where can I get one of these? I got to have this yeah. Tanuki suit. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. Those suits cost 10 bucks a pop. It's a little expensive. Woo! Um, wow. The like extra suits. So like, what if that's what it was like in the Mario games? Like, if you, <laughs> you had to, like transactions. <laughs> yeah. You had to like pay to unlock Tanuki suit. Yuck. The $10 penguin costume, meanwhile, recognizes when Mario is sliding on his belly. I need one now. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why these things are so expensive because of the like the tech. It's just yeah. it's, it's like a Joy-Con. <laughs> yeah. You're like, why does this cost so much? Because it's all this crazy digital stuff. Will it like drift to the left? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that had to be asked. Um, I, I, I just think it's interesting that they've got like, I, I still don't really quite understand like how this Lego Mario game works. Like I, I've watched a bunch of videos trying to figure it out and I'm like, can't you just make him touch the flag? Like, can't you just... <laughs> like there's a poison mushroom in this and it's like, it's like the whole fear of a poison mushroom is that it's going to touch. It's like moving on its own and it's following you, but you know, you just, don't touch it. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make a ton of sense to me. I can't. Say if it this... was like a dice rolling game or something, that would make a little bit more sense. I yeah. can't say this out loud or too loudly, rather. Uh, but my son is going to be getting some of these for for Christmas, so I will report mm. back in a couple months as to how we end up playing with it or if it. If it I'm going to share him around. the link to this podcast tomorrow. <laughs> you better make sure that if your son plays with the poison mushroom, that he touches that poison mushroom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that, yeah. then we are done for the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Permadeath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, moving on, though, there was a rumor, fake leak, I don't know what you want to call this, where there was some skins for a for a super metroid for your switch that in the ad on the switch or nintendo website i believe actually had like pictures of people playing um samus returns metroid samus returns on the, their switch um it doesn't it just kind of was striking to see this probably just an image overlay for for the uh for this sale but i guess they could have had them playing the super metroid game instead which would have made more sense um maybe the, the, unfortunately i think this is a non-story i think like this this is probably due to someone's ignorance or incompetence <laughs> in picking a <laughs> screenshot on the marketing department for whatever 100%. that product is then nintendo being like oops we accidentally put something because i don't think that the person who like made the skins yeah. would even know that they were making that game and it's been on the site for a couple of years right uh, that might be true. I, I, I don't know. I know it's been pulled now. Um, yeah. but well. what I thought was interesting is uh, correct me if I'm wrong about this, but when I first saw this before I knew all the details, I was like, Oh, it's, it's probably just like from an ad, like they, how they showed off final fantasy seven before they announced that in some ad. Right. Didn't they do that? Um, like somebody was playing final fantasy seven in an ad and then like the next day, the day they announced. The, oh, right. Like on Nintendo's YouTube. Yeah. 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 So I thought it might be that situation, but but I think you're right that this is nothing. But there's all these rumors about Metroid game, a new Metroid game or a remake or something coming to the Switch. So Yeah, and again, that's not for me saying that I don't think that Samus Returns isn't coming to the Switch. Like, I think that Samus Returns probably eventually will come to the Switch. I'd really like it to. And if not that, then I'm sure whatever Mercury Steam is working on next will come to the Switch. Um, you know, they're not going to release it for the 
you know, 3DS and they've clearly been working on something. So it's only a matter of time. We'll see. Maybe they'll reuse that screenshot in whatever <laughs> new game they're doing. That's what I am is. a Metroid fan. I love Metroid. And I have seen Metroid Returns with way more substance amount to nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So well, I'll believe this one when I see it. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I thought this was interesting. We didn't talk about this when it first got announced, but this week in Japan, in um, Osaka, I believe, there is going to be like a pop-up shop that's like all mother stuff <laughs> for from the mother or earthbound games um this is kind of tied in with that book we talked about earlier in the year that's coming out that's like i think got the the like script from the from the series as well as probably some other stuff um and then presumably some other mother you know trinkets swag whatever you want to call it are being sold at this store this this may mean nothing, but obviously with the Fire Emblem announcement and everything, maybe something's happening with these games getting re-released. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you know, all of, you know, the mother games have been released in Japan and are kind of way more part of the cultural lexicon there than they are here. You know what I mean? Uh, I think, you know, we don't even really call it mother. We only really had Earthbound, so... You know, if there was a mother's shop that popped up in like New York City, <laughs> then I'd be like, hell yeah, yeah they're porting yeah. Mother 3. <laughs> but like this kind of seems just like a very Japanese thing to pop up. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I wouldn't read too much into it. But that having been said, like you said, there's that book and everything. So I'd love to see some movement on the series. If, 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 I'd love to see a new game. You know, I think one done in like the Link's Awakening style would be amazing. Mother 3 in 64 port. Yeah, like Dude, that would be that would be wild if that was even if if they did that like if they did that like they did with this new Fire Emblem NES game that's coming out that would be lit. Uh, you were about to say something, Matt. Yeah, uh, one of the items that's in this pop up shop is this uh, Mother Three embroidered jacket. Um, Satoru Iwata showed it on his Twitter a couple years ago, and. Uh, uh, one, it's eight hundred and forty three dollars, <laughs> uh, nice. but it looks cool. <laughs> I want that. Um, we just had some some news happen while we were recording uh, for Mario thirty five. Is that right? Somebody just. Oh yeah, that's me. Uh, I put it on breaking news. There is a special battle event uh, announced for Super Mario Brothers thirty five uh, coming this weekend. Yeah. This might be Japanese only. No, it's it's for they do it every month. This is the new one they just announced it though, because that the one we were talking about earlier was an old one. I think that went that was with that update, right? David, you hate uh, Mario Thirty Five News. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like like a Tetris Ninety Nine event is cool because it's like a new skin or yeah. whatever. Uh, but a Mario yeah. Thirty Five event is just shuffling the levels a little bit. So I don't. I I I probably should play these more. I hear they're like. They can be more fun because you get more like specific kinds of enemies, and you don't just play it. one one every time. Right, right, right. But it's like I—I I never find myself playing this. I always just kind of play the regular mode. Yeah. Sorry. No, I had to no, click on the article because I was like, "Isn't the whole game a battle mode? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like the the whole yeah, concept?" It, it's not a new mode. It's just like they're changing the levels for the special battle. Uh, yeah, I have... got it. The rotation. Yeah, yeah. they're they're not. Then that you exciting. can cut this out <laughs> <laughs> or not. I don't know. We'll I, see. I, I, I don't know. It does also like before this this uh, episode released. There's been some speculation that maybe we'd be getting announcement of new games for you know Super Nintendo or Nintendo Online, and I have. They usually announce it on Tuesday nights, so I'm like, I'm wondering if we're going to get that announcement tonight. We'll see. Um, though, maybe we also talked about maybe they're done adding games. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah, if I'll, I'll do a David from the future, or we'll <laughs> we'll talk about it at the end or something. If if they do release those, yeah, NES games, I'd love to see some more. I'd love to see Earthbound. Yeah, speaking there you of. Go. Um, and then in gaming news, outside of Nintendo, somewhat this week. I, I people are calling this a leak. I'm calling this a hack or a theft or something. Mm -hmm. um, a bunch of data was stolen from Capcom and has been released online. Um, the rumor is it's about a terabyte of data um, that has been put out there. Um, kind of like the Giga Leak from Nintendo, as it's been called, even though that is also theft. Um, this is somebody stealing a bunch of information and then putting it online. And uh, also, I think it sounds like they stole a bunch of employee information. 
um, Yikes. as well as, you know, stuff about games. Um, so that happened. Um, this is I, of, of note, I guess, for Switch owners is that the hack kind of suggests that there is a Switch project under work that is codenamed Guillotine mm. from Capcom and also that they are planning to put out an Ace Attorney collection, which is like additional Ace Attorney games, the great Ace Attorney games combined with the one that they've already released as some sort of like physical Two pack, uh, okay two yeah because i think it's supposed to be what i heard is like it's four through six of ace attorney and then ace attorney franchise. there would be some sort of physical release as well that has like yeah, all of them all of them yeah that's that would be a good that'd be a good value <laughs> yeah um i've been really enjoying those games or so totally far, so just reading up on this hack uh according to different sources it was a ransomware yeah Malcolm was targeted for ransomware mm. um and so they tried to get money from Capcom. They demanded one point one million dollars in Bitcoin. You and know, they were like, "Nah, just leak nah. it." <laughs> yeah, just leak What's it. funny to me is that seems to be working. I've gotten some, like, I got some. I don't remember what it was, but you know, you get these. It's all too common now, right? Where you get a notification from somebody's like, "Your data may have been stolen." And then mm-hmm. I got one recently that was like, "They we we paid the ransom." So hopefully, nothing will come of it. And it's like, man, people are paying these ransoms, so. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's like know, a. It's crazy. It's like Nexium. <laughs> the, anybody been watching the Vow? It's well, like, that, it's like that's collateral. the sex cult, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it? Is that this where they brand people? Yeah. Well, but that's not what I'm. It doesn't matter. No, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's got a. It's got the. Uh, Listen, Allison, Mac, watch the show. Bill. It's just like collateral from Nexium, and if you know, then you know. All right, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I have more questions. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we need to drill into this more. We are a Nexium podcast now. <laughs> no, if you want to listen to a Nexium podcast, there is no fucking shortage of Nexium podcasts <laughs> oh, all the time. People love their crime shit. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What, what do y'all think of the what this Gia, project guillotine could be any thoughts yeah i i haven't looked into it this this whole thing is feels shady um so i haven't spent too much time i think that's all that that's out there right it's just the code name is anybody yeah, know? i was about to say that that i don't think i know anything other than that there's guillotine and that it's for switch yeah i like I mean, yeah, now is a good time to whip out the guillotine. <laughs> it's a cool but, code name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a cool code name. Uh, but yeah, I don't know too much about it. I'm I'm down to see more Capcom stuff made exclusive for the Switch, though. I mean, I think that they've been doing a great job with their exclusives, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how Monster Hunter Rise does. Yeah. Um, cool, then. I, I thought this was interesting. Um, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin that came out recently. Um, and it sounds like it's been selling very well in Japan. And I don't, mm-hmm. I also just thought this was interesting on our Facebook group. Matt Manchester was talking about the game. I hadn't, you know, I think they showed this off in some of the indie world presentations, right? Yeah. Yeah, they did. But I didn't ever really absorb that it was like a side scrolling action meets farming sim, which mm-hmm. just jumped out to me as being like the old game act razor and it sounds like totally. david you said that it is a lot like that or that's what it's being compared to at least. yeah i think that was the idea in development is that that was kind of an inspiration for the game was act razor yeah so that's so that's such a cool game I, that i loved as a kid um and then so i'm interested in this game but it sounds like the rice uh, farming is like very on point and and mm-hmm. and um in japan it's just been selling super well and like um yeah so yeah i I saw a a, a post talking about how the if you want a tutorial for that game or like the manual for the game just read the japanese website for the ministry of agriculture (laughs) 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 which because it's apparently like pretty spot on and uh and so yeah so it's i I, i'm hearing it's great i always thought it looked beautiful if it hadn't come out like right now during next gen time and age of calamity and pikmin having just come out i'd probably pick it up but it's kind of bad timing for me but um, i'll definitely be picking this up if there's a sale pretty soon yeah it sounds like marvelous who i think is the maybe the publisher um it's like their stock has gone up in japan and stuff and so cool very cool and then um, they finally gave us the uh, English translation of the Q&A from the most recent Nintendo uh, financial briefing, which uh, wasn't a whole lot 
of interest in there to me. Um, it was, it was nobody asked any <laughs> amazing questions <laughs> that are you know they're pretty good about deflecting answers anyway. But mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the questions kind of centered around the <laughs> huge sales and can you keep it up and and how 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 are you going to keep people um, engaged and that kind of stuff, which I think is sort of what we're going to be talking about in part for our main topic. But um, like, you know, in the questions and also I think in the other parts of the briefing, they kind of referred to the switch as just entering the halfway point of its life cycle. So we're coming up on four years and a few months. So I'm guessing they're, they're thinking this is roughly the middle, which means. Um, yeah. That's good to hear. I think. Yeah, it is. Nice yeah. To think we'll talk about it more in the, in the topic. I'm sure. But yeah. yeah. I think. I'm, I'm, if they, if they were like, oh, we're, we want to like really keep up and like make something that's going to keep up with these systems. Like I would be like really worried Yeah, <laughs> if they said that, so <laughs> it, it kind of puts me at ease to hear that they want to just keep doing what they're doing and they're making lots of money. And I, so, yeah. so, so, um, win, win, <laughs> unless anybody's got anything on that or anything else we mentioned, um, maybe we can take a quick break then. And when we come back, we'll talk all about that. And also all about that Xbox series. Can we, do we just call it the Xbox series or do we have to say the, X and uh, S? I think it's what, what's the symbol for the, the straight line, <laughs> uh, uh, pipe. To, it's, is uh, that what it's, it's called? Pipe, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pipe. So, pipe. so I think Xbox's official name for it is Xbox Series X Pipe S. <laughs> 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 That's how they're writing it down on all their literature. But or vertical yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Xbox <laughs> Series X is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if we talk about that in the PS5 when we come back. <laughs> what do, is that? The Nexium? Is that the sex? Thing? No, no, no. <laughs> We're cutting. We're cutting. We're cutting the commercial. Okay. All right, so this week we're talking all about next gen, which is now current gen, I guess. Um, and we're going to talk about impressions of the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X Pipe S, and um, and also a little bit about, like, you know, will Nintendo do a hardware refresh? What are they going to do? When is next gen Nintendo system? That kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. um We'll start off with the impressions. I don't have a system, so I'll let y'all lead. You know, um, I think between the three of you, you have the three systems, right? The, the, th- <laughs> the three new systems, as long as you don't count the PS5 digital edition. Oh, that's right. Uh, I believe you have a disc edition, right, Rob? I do have a disc edition. It, if I had not been just trying to buy whichever one I could get as quickly as possible. <laughs> yeah. I would have preferred the digital edition. Really? Oh, but right. The disc editions were always going in stock faster. So I picked those up. They're, right, right, right. How, it's like, it's a significant price thing. It's a hundred dollars for just yeah. a disc wow. drive. But I guess theoretically yeah. you could make up the savings if you buy games, you know, if games continue to go on sale as they historically have, right? Like I have been all digital for oh, years. Okay. I do not care what the discount is. Uh, no price discount is worth the amount of money that I save not having to stand up to change what game I'm playing. That is a strong <laughs> opinion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, that's that's been my approach to the Switch the whole time. You know what I mean? It's, it's the uh, convenience fee. Yeah, totally. But uh, yeah, I, I picked up an S. I got my S on Friday, Xbox Series S. Uh uh last friday and that's pretty much all i've been playing this past week actually is like using that xbox series s i'm liking it quite a bit um it does not have a disc drive um but you know so far i've only really played game pass games um on it anyway so that's kind of what i was going to be doing with it um but yeah i'm i'm loving it so far uh, i think it's pretty great initial impressions from me are are good i missed out on the last uh, generation of xbox i did not have a one in any nature i got a ps4 a little bit into the generation uh and then yeah so it's so i'm, I'm doing a lot of catch up um and and it's nice too because i've you know i've got a friend that i'm kind of doing game share with we're signed into each other's systems so we have all of each other's games so it's like there's a ton of old xbox 360 games that i never got around to playing on his account and then that plus you know uh ea play and and game pass and all this kind of stuff i've already got like 35 games on the system or something um 
but yeah, that's 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 what I picked up. Matt, uh, I have a Series X, uh, and it's it's crazy. It's huge. Uh, Rob, you can probably speak about the PS5 and how big it is. Yeah, but, <laughs> uh, that thing is fucking huge. Yeah, Series X is huge. Uh, it's monolithic, uh, <laughs> which feels weird. It's just like a giant rectangle. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, the biggest thing about next gen is just low times. Yeah. Low times. Totally. It's just like uh, a huge shift, a huge change. I mean, Rob, if you're like saying it's too hard to get up to change a disc, <laughs> like we, going back from this generation to Xbox One or PS4 is going to be also incredibly difficult. But it's just because the load times are so quick. It's I don't do all the instant on features of the Xbox or PS4. I shut everything off uh, to save money, whether it saves money, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it still loads up fast and probably, you know, under 10 seconds. And yeah. before the X- Xbox one X took 30 to 45 seconds. Totally. It's crazy. And it's like, there's the, there's the kind of, uh, what do they call it? The quick resume, uh, feature in, in the series X and the series S, um, which kind of utilizes the SSD and it can keep up to like four games, basically wherever you were in the game like saved at that point it's like a save state um i don't even really like to use that that much because a lot of times the quick resume will take the same amount of time if not slightly longer (laughs) than if i just started the game up from scratch you know like i've I've been playing a lot of indie games you know so it's like the quick resume getting to where i was is just as snappy as as starting the game up from nothing and getting it going uh that's been really impressive about the the series s for sure i've been really enjoying that um, hopefully at some point they can like, cause it, it takes up quite a bit of the hard drive space or the, the SSD is like allotted for, oh, uh, that like that's why snapshot? like shot. Yeah. So like the 500 gig, uh, of the series S is actually like a 330 gig usable. Like it's pretty small. So like if I could, I'd, you know, take away half of those quick resume spots and get <laughs> half of that space back. Hopefully but that we'll makes see. me wonder why. And I don't know if this is just kind of confirmation bias or whatever, but it seems like Sony is getting absolutely dragged for their 825 gig drive, only allotting (laughs) like 667 gigs. But it sounds like if it's the exact same thing for Xbox, I don't know why people are making a huge deal out of it for the PS5, but not the other way around. Yeah, I mean, I guess because I don't think the PS5 has a quick resume feature, right? It doesn't. Um, the, The closest thing to it that I found is it has like the little cards system that right. kind of gives you a snapshot of like you're 83% of the way towards this achievement. And if you click on that, you can go into resume and it'll at least for Spider-Man, it'll drop you into your save file, like where you are, where you can do that. And it takes like 10 seconds. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I, I do think that the PS five UI and whole backend has a lot more bells and whistles than the series X and S like those, you know, it's like you were saying this last week, Matt, but like it's basically the exact same UI as the Xbox one. Right. And it's there's not a ton there. I know PlayStation had. Yeah, it's got the thing where you can record clips of audio and all that kind of stuff. And I think there's just more happening in the back end on the PS5, Um, you know, to each their own. It's, it's, it's both like they're both kind of things where it's like it's fun to have, but neither of them are real deal breakers, you know. So I, when I was trying to say is i think the one of the reasons playstation's getting uh criticism is that they have no expansion available right now like mm. like i think for the xbox you can buy you know an external drive and attach it but like that's not that is going to happen with the playstation but it doesn't support the uh that right now um mm-hmm. and that might be part of what you were talking about Rom. but um yeah there's a there's a couple things that are on the box that it says you can do with the PS5 that you cannot do. Like 8K is not supported right now. I think like 120 frames per second might not even be supported right now. Maybe I'm wrong. But the game uh, has to support it. Right, right. And obviously, it's not going to be every game that has to be like optimized by the developers. But um, definitely, it, it seems like the, the new Xbox is more feature complete than PS5, it would seem, uh, at launch. That having been said, Xbox doesn't have any exclusives. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right now. it's such a weird Except launch. Why, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a weird and launch. And that's why I stuck from PS4 to PS5. And like, 
it would have taken a long argument to convince me to make the switch to Xbox just because right. it, I have a PC. I have a good PC. And so the like Games Pass is awesome. If I was going to get an Xbox, it would be for Game Pass. But mm-hmm. like it, Xbox hasn't shown me anything. I don't think Xbox is even in that market necessarily right. anymore. I don't think they're as interested in selling Xboxes at they are, as they are in selling Xbox Game Pass. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah, yeah, Great. yeah. And that's that seems to be the case, and especially yeah, like we said, with no launch exclusives, you know that they're banking on on people getting it for that reason, which I think is working out for them. As far as I understand, this has been the biggest Xbox launch ever. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's right. Uh, it's, this is taking us back just a minute, but I did want to hear Rob the size and 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 I don't know visual aesthetic of the PlayStation Five. How does it feel? Like, is it? It's huge. <laughs> It's it's huge. It's a thick, chonky boy. Does it like stand uh, it, out on your desk or your so TV stand? Or it whatever? doesn't for mine because after some light rearranging, it like fits perfectly right behind my TV. And so like I still have mm. access to the disk drive and everything. The back USB ports are a little weird to get to, but I only use those for charging controllers pretty much. Right. Uh, so I'm not missing out on anything. But You're hiding it. I, I, I definitely get why people are super divided on it. Like some people love it. Some people hate it. I'm kind of in the love it camp <laughs> personally. OK, right. But yeah. you shoved it Just behind because... your TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a it's a space thing. So I have a Roomba and like my Roomba already hits my PS4 and turns it on and messes gotcha. with it. And so I, I need it elevated so that my Roomba doesn't mess with it. Right. But. I don't have any space for it. Like it's literally taking up the last, I don't know, 30 some square inches of real estate that I have on my entertainment center. Yeah. Um, but I love it, how it looks exactly like an eighth grader thought that the PS5 was going to look like in 2005. <laughs> totally. Yeah. David, how's that Series S look on your on your shelf? Or oh, whatever? it's great. I mean, that's the best thing about the Series S is that <laughs> it's like, it yeah, it's very pretty. Like it's, you know, I mean, it's it's basic. You know, it's just a little white box, but it's like remarkably small. It's heavy. You know, they, there's a lot packed into it. And it's like, that. I think that's a, a pretty big misconception about the Series S is that, yeah, it is less powerful than the series x but it's a very impressive system and it, and it runs games really really well um you know it, it's not hitting the 4k I, I don't currently have a 4k tv I, I am planning on on hopefully getting one this black friday um you know and in that case like my you know i probably don't have exactly the right xbox didn't really future proof in that way but it's like not super important to me like um, I think that the size is really nice and I like the white controller as well. It like feels really good in my hands and I think it looks really clean. Um, I think the biggest problem I'm going to have is, is with that storage space, you know, cause I've got, you know, like I said, it's already full. I think I have like 200 megs free on my system right now. Um, you know, that having been said, I just went on a spree and just downloaded like a fuck ton of games, including a bunch of indies that I was going to buy on the switch anyway. Right. And, uh, and so I, it's full now, and that concerns me. Like, I'm going to have to either delete some stuff or move some stuff whenever, like, Cyberpunk comes out. Or, you know, if I want to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla, like, that's a huge game, you know. So, you know, I, I, I'm basically actually, that's something I'm trying to figure out right now because I don't want to shell out 220 bucks for that, like, extra SSD that you can plug into the back. Um, and really, the only reason you would need that is to play, like, Series S and X optimized games uh, off of. Uh, and for the better load times, right? You'll get better load times if you have them on that thing. I'm I'm actually in, right now probably going to pick like a two to four terabyte little external hard drive just to plug in and like put Xbox One, Xbox 360 games, indie games, stuff like that on there. And then just basically keep my main SSD open for the bigger games that will really benefit from better load times and will have you know, those graphics optimizations and stuff like that. Whenever I do get a TV with HDR or whatever, I'll be able to play those games that way from the, from the SSD. Uh, Matt, you actually might be able to answer this. This has been something I've been wondering. It's been hard to Google, but do you know, do you like, did you ever plug in a hard drive to your uh, Xbox one? Yep. Did you, did you use an SSD or a, or a hard drive for the Uh, external? 
I don't remember. I think I had an an internal hard drive on an ex in an external enclosure. Oh, but it was like a spinning disk hard drive. Let's see, yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm wondering if like if it would be more beneficial to get an SSD if it's going to be external or if that's going to be throttled by the USB 3.1 anyway. Because if that's the case, I don't want to like shell out a bunch for an SSD yeah. if it's not going to be any advantage to me. You know what I mean? But yeah, that makes sense that they would prioritize that port that's on the back of the X uh, Series X and Series S, right? For for that high speed. Yeah. Either way, I I think that should solve most of my problems. And then you know, so moving stuff back and forth from the SSD to the hard drive is a lot faster than downloading you know what i mean so regardless I'll, I'll have it on there for storage uh and i can just move stuff back if i need it i think that as this generation kind of matures and as they're selling more units and as it's getting more and more into people's houses i think that you're gonna see the solid state market as a whole dip cheaper and dip to become more available and i think that's kind of i think that this console is really going to push us to where like we fully start to phase out spinning hard drive discs. Yeah. It's like, it's I, like going it's about from, time going from like a dial up modem to, to like, to Kinda, like, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 I mean, there, I, we're already seeing them dip cheaper and cheaper and cheaper every day. You know, it's, it's a matter of time, but I think you're right, Rob. I think that this is going to really kick that in the pants and get that change going. How, how is the, how has your impression been Rob of like the loading speed on, on the games you've been playing on the PlayStation five? It's been great. Um, obviously, there's the kind of concern about launch day issues. Uh, everybody has them with their different consoles. And I've like, I'm not sure if I'm just being more attuned to it. I've definitely had like, I'll fast travel in Spider-Man and then I'll just get stuck on a black screen. Ooh, <laughs> crash. And, it, and it's especially like I literally thought right before I did it, I'm like, this is going to be instant. And then it was like, 15 seconds of black screen. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> and I closed it and loaded it back up and did the exact same fast travel. And it took like a second and a half. Yeah. So wow. I'm not sure if that's a Spider-Man problem or a PS5 problem. Uh, but like outside of the very, very occasional hitch, I've been super, super impressed with the PS5. Uh, mm. How's that controller? I, think, I was about to say, I think especially the DualSense controller, uh, i while Spider-Man was downloading, because that was always priority number one for me. I loved the PS4 Spider-Man. If Miles yeah. Morales has been an absolute treat. Uh, but while that was downloading, I fired up Astro World, Astro Boy, Astro's whatever Playroom, it's called, <laughs> Astro's Playroom, <laughs> Pee Wee's yeah. Playhouse. Yeah, and just got to play around in that. And the adaptive triggers are really, really cool. Like That's you hop, cool. you hop Astro into a spring suit. And then you like get the resistance in the trigger of like pushing a spring. So as you pull the trigger down, it gets harder to pull it all the way down. Mm. Uh, it's just been it's been a really neat tech demo. Uh, the question is kind of like, how will it be supported? Right. And I think I think that's kind of the nice thing about Sony's situation is they've got a lot of first parties and a lot of great first parties. Mm. And so I I think that you'll see more support for it than you did with like the Wii. But I also think that third parties are going to kind of yeah. play with it a little and then drop it. Like, yeah. I think there's some support for it in the new Call of Duty. They have some ad adaptive trigger stuff. But I would be very surprised if like two or three Call of Duties from now, they still like put that level of care into it. Yeah, it's like the, the touchpad on the PS4 and, and like the back touchpad on the Vita. It's like at the very beginning, you saw everybody using it. And then it was like, Meh, with, it's kind of easier to just port this game over right. and yeah. not have to worry about that yeah if the touchpad just became a functional select button well and if developers are having to like make all these like videos on like how you can beat certain sections like with those little cards you were talking about you know what i mean yeah. that's already more work they're having to do if they want to use the full features of the ui so it's you know you gotta uh, you can only allocate so much employee time to a port if they in those cards just gave me like you are X percent of the way through the game. Like, I don't super care about achievements or collectibles. If they just told me, like, you're 56 percent of the way through this game. If they just keep that through the whole generation, I'll be super psyched. Yeah, that's all I ever I, I'm tired of having to go to wikis and see, like, OK, how much of this game? do I have? <laughs> totally, totally. But, but back to your point I, earlier, Rob, I do think that, like, if the first party studios like 
use the 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 controller to its full potential and really blow people's minds that's what's going to make this stick in and maybe get you know third parties using it or other like xbox trying to do something similar or or you know what i mean and i hope that's the case because mm-hmm. it does sound cool as somebody who hasn't touched it yet but yeah um i think something that just an idea that i thought about that really excites me is how the new god of war is going to use yeah it. oh like, I think yeah when you pull the axe back <laughs> and i'm just imagining like the haptic in your right hand and like they'll probably do some sort of trigger response on it i think that's going to be really cool well, what if there was like resistance as you're like rowing through water if you can like feel yourself treading cool. water that'd be really awesome when we uh, eventually get a skyrim port it's going to be the fos rada it's going to be the, the trigger <laughs> very nice. i i just want to i want to see uh how super mario sunshine would play with those adaptive <laughs> triggers man that would probably feel pretty amazing but um yeah i mean the the, the xbox uh series uh controller i mean it's pretty much it's just basically the xbox one controller right matt yep yeah and it, i think the thing that i'm finding that i'm missing most in that is i don't think there's any motion control or or is there any uh, there's no like accelerometer in the in the I don't think so there might be an accelerometer but no like gyroscope yeah see that's I that I really think is a missed opportunity I don't know why that isn't in every controller like motion controls like it just feels so natural the switch has just made me feel you know and even the ps4 had it and it's like even just like typing in on like the little uh, whenever text comes up on a PS4 and you move around the gyroscope, like that feels really good. I always like that. I wish uh, Microsoft would include that in their controller. Um, but uh, that's the only thing I really miss. Other- otherwise, I think the ergonomics of the controller is great. Um, you know, I like that they added the capture button. That's something that the Switch had, where it's you don't really realize how much you need that until you have a Switch Pro controller and you're like, oh, cool. I would have never saved this clip if it wasn't something I could do in like one second with my thumb. Um, so yeah, I think that's really cool. Well, uh, we've talked a bit about these consoles, but is there anything that y'all wanted to say that we haven't said before we move on to, to Nintendo specific stuff, anything? Uh, just one thing is like talking about some of the tech, like the big innovations here uh, from the visual perspective is like HDMI 2.1 mm-hmm. supporting high frame rate and VRR variable refresh rate. Like to have the tech to support those features, I don't know too many people. I don't have uh, that kind of TV. You need like an OLED TV or like a TV newer within the past two years. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are not any monitors that support HDMI 2.1 to give you those features. For like the 1440p renders. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, And there's some few games that don't also support this high refresh rate. So I think it'll be a couple years before we have monitor manufacturers that support HDMI 2.1 um, and people you know, maybe start buying new TVs, uh, have a user base that supports these features that we will hear more of it. Totally. I mean, that's the, as somebody who's like shopping for a TV right now, um, you know, I've been trying to replace this TV. I've, I've, you know, I've had my current TV for like a decade, you know, and it's been a total workhorse. I, I love it, but it's like. I need something bigger because my eyes are getting worse and text is getting smaller in games. Uh, and I've been looking at those OLEDs, man. But man, it's the really the cheapest one you can find is like thirteen hundred bucks um, for the uh, what, like the LG CX. Like that looks really nice, but it's like, is that worth like getting that and not getting like a PS Five or something? You know, I like you could spend so much money on other things (laughs) instead of just the tv for a feature you might just barely use you know i think that if you want a tv that actually genuinely supports 8k hdmi 2.1 120 hertz refresh rate like all these things that the ps5 advertises to you as possible i think there's only like one tv in the (laughs) whole world that does that's what i'm talking about yeah Yeah. and 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 sony makes it yeah Yeah, i was gonna say it it's on uh, fucking SpaceX's crew one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like there, there's a little. That's good that there's some future proofing in here, but it does totally, seem yeah. like it is a, the selling points maybe a little too early. You know, it's like 8K. Like when you're when you're talking 8K, th- like whose eyes are like good enough for that? You know what I mean? It's like like nobody's. If, if you've got a 4K TV and you've got it big, like you know. And and you're not right up on the screen, like 
you know, no one's really going to be able to tell 8K. Like, like I mean, I you know, I I, I kind of feel the same way about 4K to a certain extent, but that's because, like I said, I've got old cataract eyes. But like, I think, you know, we'll see. I think the high refresh rate, refresh rate, the 120 hertz is going to be really what you want to get going forward more than the the 8K because that's only really. I don't even think too many games are going to be able to do that. Nah, yeah, man. especially this 8K generations at about, 120 hertz. Yeah, this generation's about two things and two things only. It's about rays and it's about Ks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let me trace those rays. Um, anything else? Then we get to move on. Uh, we got one more thing. Um, Digital Foundry did a comparison video for Devil May Cry Five SE, comparing frame rates, uh, PS Five to Xbox One X. It's a long video. If you really like nerdy tech shit, it's interesting. Uh, but PS5 is performing a little bit better in that port than the Xbox Series X, despite Xbox Series X being more powerful. Hmm. How much of that do you think comes down to optimization on the developer side? Yeah, almost all of it, probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably yeah, just either. as much time as they can spend on each port. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Sony has better development tools, is what we've heard uh, more than Microsoft. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out because I think generally in the last generation, uh, the idea was like if you have both and you can play on both, like in the case of Red Dead Redemption 2, I think the de facto thing was like play it on Xbox. It'll be better on Xbox. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that's that was a big reason why I got the Series S, right, was, you know, it. it eventually I'll want to get a PS5, you know, like right now the launch lineup for ps5 like uh, i i still i i enjoyed spider-man but i still haven't beaten the first one on ps4 you know what i mean and i i just it, there's a lot of games that are i have on the ps4 that i haven't beaten that's a lot because i have a really bad attention span and it's hard for me to <laughs> complete games a lot of times and I'm, i get so distracted by my switch um but but you know like i'm not a big dark souls guy so like demon souls was a huge draw for me um but i know eventually i'll want to get a ps5 and you know replace the ps4 that i have but for the time being you know the game pass library was really speaking to me and it's like if i know i'm getting a ps5 eventually do i ne- really need like two 4k powerhouse systems you know if i really want to play a third party game in 4k i'll just play it on the ps5 i know i'm eventually going to get right um so that's kind of that was my decision i feel like you know if you're going to have a supplemental one i think that's where the series s like really comes into play is like a supplemental system yeah I think if someone were to come up to me and ask me, hey, Rob, should I buy a PS5 right now? I'd probably tell them to hold off. Yeah. Buying it is super stressful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the worst time trying to get one. Yeah. Uh, and it's so expensive. And at this point, it's just like a really, really nice PS4. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I absolutely think that it will get there right. between God of War and they're going to do a Spider-Man 2 for sure. And New Horizon. God of War. Uh, Horizon. I think I said God of War already. Yeah. <laughs> Between the first parties. Sony will eventually make it worth your time and money. I'm just not sure that right now is the time. No. Mm-hmm. It appealed to me because I love Spider-Man and I love Dark Souls. Um, but if you're just thinking about it, probably hold off. Totally. Yeah, uh, Rob, what would you say if I'm looking for 1Ks and 2 Rays? <laughs> Well, one K's and two rays. Uh, you you That's probably want to get like bro. a, a thirty a thirty fifty. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, we should talk a little bit about Nintendo um, and how this fits, how they fit into this. Um, nope. Now that I have an Xbox, we're changing <laughs> we're t- this to a Microsoft podcast. <laughs> MS heads. Um, <laughs> the, so there's obviously the big question of does Nintendo even need to compete? They're selling so well. They're making so much money. The Switch is big halfway through its life cycle um you know we talked about this i think recently that it was the best-selling console in north america for 20 uh, some odd months it's now continued we're no- another month into that um yeah and that the real question is what's going to happen this month right is it going to get unseated by these new consoles right are the different skews going to affect it or are they going to lump all the xboxes yeah. together and then maybe that beats it um so I, I guess there's an argument the that Nintendo doesn't need to compete right in this moment, but 
because especially because what you're talking about too, Rob, and like do you, there's the launch lineup for these consoles is lacking. There's you know you can't use some of the features of them unless you have the right equipment. Um, Nintendo's got the casual market cornered here, um, and they're going to continue to sell really well, I think, this holiday. So they don't need to, but eventually they there might be that sort of you know question of should I get a switch now or or what have you. So the big thing that we could talk about is the switch revision or revisions that we might see. Um, and when that might happen and what that would look like, what, uh, there's obviously been tons of rumors for this pro, uh, that's, as it's been called, um, question, we can talk about that maybe for just a minute. Like, do you think that that's happening next year? That's what all the rumors are pointing to. Do you think that that's a way to compete or is that a way to just what's, what's, what would be the reason for dropping that? I don't know. What do y'all think? Um, I'll go first. I think that ultimately, no, Nintendo does not need to compete. Nintendo, even if they didn't have any third party support, uh, for like AAA publishers, I think would be fine, uh, continuing just as they are now. You know, it would it would have all the indies that come out still. Uh, not that indies are like system sellers, but it's like it would still have all the first party games, which is what people really buy a Switch for in the first place. Um, and it would have indies, and it would maybe get some older generational games continuing to trickle in, right? Like it's been having right now. And I think that Nintendo would do perfectly fine with just that. Uh, now that having been said. Nintendo will eventually, if they do not upgrade their system, will eventually run into a bit of an issue with third parties. I think, uh, you know, and I've 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 listened to a couple of podcasts, like I listened to NVC uh, IGN's Nintendo podcast talk about the same topic, and they were like, pretty much everybody was unanimously like, "Oh, Nintendo's fine; they'll keep doing their own thing." But it's like, realistically, you know, these third party developers they're going to be making these new games that are way out of the wheelhouse of what the Switch is capable of doing right and they could spend a shit ton of time trying to witcherfy a fucking port <laughs> you know what i mean and make the magic work of like making this thing happen but it's gonna play like shit by this point there are gonna be a ton more of these new systems out there so no one's gonna buy it on the switch because you could play a way better version on the new consoles that you own so it's like i think if anything like if nintendo wants to keep getting like lesser versions of current gen games they need this pro right you know because you know if they can get you know it's not going to get up to parity with these other consoles but if they can get it to a point where it's doing now what the switch was doing for ps4 and xbox one then i think that they'll be all right and hopefully that's what the switch pro is able to do um, but I'm also kind of not holding my breath about that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see how it shakes out. Yeah. But either way, we're going to start to see third party support really start to taper off in the latter half of the Switch's lifespan, I think. I I think that point that got brought up from the financials, like the Switch is halfway through its life cycle. Like yeah. as far as Nintendo is concerned, they are halfway into the current Switch. I don't even I'm not even convinced there's going to be a Switch Pro. Mm. Uh, I think that any sort of Switch Pro thing would just be kind of like a light hardware revision, like we saw a little bit ago, where like they put a newer chipset in the same family, so your load times are like 3.3 seconds instead of 3.8 seconds. And that's that. I mean, I, I want you to keep talking about, but that is one of the things I did want us to talk about, which is is this Switch Pro just. Uh, like the switch v2 like we saw uh, but maybe slightly better and, and you know they sell out the, they they just kind of start restocking with this new version and it's maybe not some huge upgrade but but i think that's very quite possible but sorry go on what else what, what else were you gonna say uh, i i think my concern with a switch pro would be um similar to what xbox is doing like i i know that some developers have talked about how the series S and the series X both being next gen, but the series S being significantly less powerful than the series X hamstrings what developers can do in the next generation a little bit because they have to account for this box that isn't as powerful as the other boxes. And so I'd be like, you know, 
they come out with the Switch Pro. And I guess we saw a little bit of this with like the new Nintendo 3DS. If y'all had one of those, like you couldn't get Xenoblade Chronicles port on the old 3DS, but you could on the new 3DS. So I'm wondering if we'd see something like that from a Switch Pro or if they like do checkerboard 4K. (laughs) I don't see them doing such a thing where it's like, here's a Switch and it plays in 4K because then they kind of leave their old switch in the dust. And that's not, I, I don't a great see, look. I don't see 4k until a switch Two eventually. And that's like whatever the next generation of, of switch is not this revision we're talking about. I don't think we'll see 4k until then. Um, but I, I, I do think though, I do think that there will be one. I think we'll get it next year. And I think that at first Nintendo is going to be like, all games will work on both. But I think eventually people are going to want to take advantage of a slight, even if it's just overclocking, like you could, you can do more with with what's already in there. Like, because if you overclock the switch now, like if you hack it and overclock it, you can get games to run a lot better. You know, so even if it's just that, that'll help developers run a lot of stuff that, you know, just runs like dog shit on the current switch. So I think I do think eventually we're going to get to a point where like we will get those Xenoblades or like the Binding of Isaac, which only worked on the new one. Uh, I think I think we'll get some stuff like that. And it's going to piss off fans, but <laughs> I won't care. I'll, I'll be happy for it. Yeah. I know that if they make a Switch Pro, I'm going to buy one. <laughs> I just bought a PS5, and the Switch is still my favorite video game console ever yeah. made. Mm. Sony's going to put out their big first-party flagship every six months, and then I'll play it for a month, and then I will go back to playing every other game whatever on my Switch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Matthew, you got something for us there? Yeah, when, when I think about this question, like going back also to the financial questions is in almost every nintendo response they talk about how much goddamn money animal crossing new horizons <laughs> made right um and how they want to convert those new customers to buy more software mm-hmm. and how do you convert the person who just bought switch for animal crossing to buy new hardware a year a year and a half two years later i think that's really really hard to do and so you start to target the existing switch base which is you know us who nerds who have a nintendo podcast but also bought a nintendo switch within that first year or first two years those are the people you're trying to convert to buy sure. new hardware totally. yeah i think that's a good point and i think to do that you need sir you need a service like like a, a game pass or you need some reason to convert those sales i'm we we're all gonna buy it because you know we're suckers <laughs> yeah um, we're gamers matt <laughs> yeah real same ones. thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that that's what i've been thinking about is from a business perspective like what do you do who are you targeting to put the sales and if it comes out in march like ev- what everyone thinks it will be why March <laughs> is it like yeah. is it is it because it's after the holiday season and it's kind of the hype about the next gen has died down and they're targeting that moment yeah or is it like exactly know. what Rob was kind of talking about of like they want to sell out all their switches in at the holiday and then and then start shipping in these, yeah yep. this is the same price same thing but it's a it's got a little bit better to it's the to end of the f- end of the financial year mm-hmm. right it, like uh in like April so it's like <laughs> get something out right at the very end there and get like a big boost of sales to make their year look really good. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see though. I mean, either way, <laughs> I, I think Nintendo is going to be totally fine. There's a reason we haven't really talked about them too much in this episode. You know what I mean? It, like with the next gen stuff, it's cause it's like Nintendo always does their own thing, you know? And I think that regardless of what happens, they'll be okay. There will still be great games for the switch. You, you know, you might not be able to play fucking Assassin's Creed Valhalla on it, but do you want to? No, right. I don't want to. <laughs> I, it's not what I use my switch for. Uh, and so I, I, I think the majority of switch owners would agree on that as well. It's going to yeah. be called the new Nintendo switch and it's going to have a third joystick <laughs> <laughs> back and a end. rumble pack. Yeah. 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 And a, and a microphone so you can port. Hey, you Pikachu. Finally 4k HD rumble. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there's a lot of other things we could talk about, but maybe we just built very briefly then like, so they said they're halfway through the, the life cycle of this. So in three, Four years, you know, PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series consoles are are really hitting their stride or whatever. 
what is what does Nintendo put out to to get people to to abandon their Switch and you know obviously they do it with software maybe but like um what could they do for a Switch successor is it are we just going to only have hybrids now do you think they would do anything different or any any wild speculation obviously we can't we can't predict that far out but in 2023 2024 what are we looking at stick with the hybrid agreed hopefully in 4 years tech will be to the point where we'll just you know it's like we're, we're kind of plateauing on tech for home consoles right like we're like now we're all like oh my god the load times the are faster speed. you know what i mean <laughs> but it's like we could do like really good graphics and we could have really dense cities and we can have all this kind of shit in our gameplay right um so it's like but but this handheld market like the sky's the limit i mean you know and you know fucking nvidia just bought arm and you know there's all this right that that's what happened right <laughs> NVIDIA bought arm. Yeah. yeah sorry it's, it's been a crazy year but uh so it's like I think hopefully we see a lot more improvements in handheld small chipsets and getting really good beefy performance out of those. So I say stick with it, man. And if, you know, if just be okay with being behind the PS5 and the Xbox series for a while because you don't not need to catch up with them. But if you just kind of keep iterating and making these the tech better and better and better here, and I'd love to see Nintendo innovate, you know, try some new shit, but, but don't. I, I don't want to see a handheld and a console again. I'm I'm loving this hybrid idea, and I I don't think that they want to move away from it either. I think Furukawa said as much. I'm I'm 100 in agreement. Uh, I I'm tendy yang till I die. Uh, <laughs> if they put out another home console, I will buy it. Yeah. But I I really think that they've stump not stumbled, worked really hard and found something with the Switch. Yeah. Uh, they're like just being able to play whatever play my home console quality games on the go playing Zelda breath of the wild on my couch while my girlfriend watches yes. TV yeah. is a revelation. <laughs> it it's, is. it's it's <laughs> the greatest. The novelty so has they, not worn off there at all. It's not, yeah. it's not, not novelty. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. 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 <laughs> so if four years from now, they put out a switch that is half portable, half home console that has a better battery life and like PS4 quality graphics, hardware games, Good job. Yeah. I'm hundred percent on board. Totally. Yeah. And that that's how you market it too. Cause if you think about the first Nintendo switch commercial, it was someone bringing their switch to a rooftop party. We, I mean, we shouldn't have rooftop parties anymore because <laughs> COVID <laughs> or that's the um, only kind of party, I guess. Cause it's outside. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so you, you, yeah, yeah no, start, so you start marketing to those experiences that you have where you're playing a game while someone else is in the room. Yeah. And totally. like you sell it that way. Yeah. Cr- cradling a baby in your arm while you're playing Fortnite or whatever. No, they had mm-hmm. those ads and it, it yeah. that was, that is, was me. Yeah. He's no longer mm-hmm. a baby, but um, <laughs> I think there was college humor or something put out the real switch commercials. And it was like Nintendo switch. You can play it on the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. As long Got as we that. stick with being able to play on the toilet, I think I'm good. Yeah. Well, what do y'all think about when then? Like, so Nintendo is saying this is halfway through the life cycle. Do we believe them? Do you really think that they'll be able to make the Switch stretch till I think that long? Life yeah. cycle is Switch the brand, just like mm. Xbox. Uh, Xbox One was the brand, and they had you know multiple revisions of that. Um, I think we'll get a new hardware revision. Yeah, probably within the next year. Yeah, I, I, I think I think they're right on the money. I think a hardware revision next year, and then I'd say four years from now we see the new one at least. I think if I don't think we'll see it any sooner than that. I think potentially they could squeeze another five out of this, especially if this refresh is considerable enough. Um, but even if not, I mean, I think yeah, four to five years I would say until the next one. And that'll put it, you know, keep, it'll. Keep Nintendo keeps straddling that generational line, and I think they're really comfortable there. Uh, the Wii U didn't work, but I don't see any reason why, if they kept in the hybrid market, that they would slow down anytime soon. Awesome. Any other thoughts about anything we've talked about today in terms of next gen and and Nintendo's in next gen? No. Uh, it's been an exciting week in gaming this past week, which has been really nice, right? Yeah. Because life has been so weird and fucked up and hectic. And one of the only things that has been like good throughout all of this is that gaming is at an all time high yeah. right now. Right. Yeah. It's like 
like if you needed a break from the fucking election shit, like you could just play some games because there are new consoles out now. Right. And it's like, that's great. I just I'm trying to keep the the positive. Right. It's like, yeah, maybe the launches weren't super excellent, but it's it's always exciting to get new hardware and new generations. And so I'm just glad that we're in that time right now. And I'm, I'm feeling the hype uh, for it. And yeah, hopefully if we're in lockdown for another six months, they could push out a lot of games quicker. <laughs> it's been super nice to get that. I missed E3 real bad this year. Same. Like yeah. E3 is probably top five things that i really feel like we missed out on this year so to get just a week where it's new consoles and new games and cyberpunk comes out soon just feels really good yeah cool well um we'll take a quick break and when we come back we're gonna talk about all the video games we've been playing recently just like you were talking about david i i have been really using video games as a way to unwind and in particular been playing a lot of animal crossing for that reason um, because I've just needed something to chill out. And um, also I've kind of feel that way. I've been playing the Phoenix, Wright Ace attorney games. They're kind of just because it's slow paced. I can just kind of like do whatever those games have been my sort of chill out games. I haven't played anything new this week, but just the same five games I've been playing those two Xenoblade Chronicles Two, chipping away at that Uh, a lot of smash ultimate. And then also a lot of Pikmin Pikmin three, which so you've been continuing to play the game. Yeah, which I did want to say because, you know, I was kind of like, I don't know, I I still feel really weird about this sort of style of game where, you know, you want to beat your own time. And and we talked about that a little bit in the in the last episode. But here I am with my kid every day in the afternoon. We put an hour in to do another mission and try to get a medal or whatever. So it is well designed for that. And while I that obviously has its, its niche in the marketplace and all that and. I do wish some of it was more story based, but there's a lot of extra content when you when you beat some of these just mission mode things. It actually if you get medals on them all, that actually unlocks even more spoiler, Mm. I guess. But um, what the fuck? man? (laughs) So there's a lot of extra content and um, my kids like we should platinum all these levels. And I'm like, well, we're never going to do that because you (laughs) only want to use purple Pikmin or whatever, you know, like (laughs) those are the flying ones, the the pink one. They're flying. They're the heavy ones. Yeah. The purple ones. I was sort of a joke, but like he does occasionally, I get mad because he's occasionally like, I just want the white ones right now. And I'm like, but you're going towards water. Um, (laughs) Just put it on Twitch. Pink Pikmin only. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, There you go. Uh, But anyway, that's what I've been playing those five games. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, I've been, yeah, like I said, I, I've really only been playing uh, my Xbox Series S since I got it on Friday, and I've been really busy otherwise, so I haven't even had a, t- a ton of time to do that. But, um, but yeah, some notable games. I've been playing a lot of Game Pass games, like I said, um, uh, one, and a couple of these uh, I've been wanting to pick up on on Switch anyway, and never got around to. So uh, you can use these recommendations as a Nintendo gamer listener, uh, but. Uh, one of them was the messenger. I finally started playing that game. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have played it as well, but uh, it's it's excellent. Um, I I knew the gameplay was going to be really tight, which I've been enjoying. The platforming is really fun, and and it's got a great visual style and a kicking soundtrack. But I was really surprised by the writing in the game. Uh, it's very very witty and very funny. The shopkeeper like gets into like really serious discussions about like depression and like identity and like, you know, the reason that he's not happy is because he's always trying to achieve some goal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all this like crazy shit. I was just like, same dude. I'm fucking feeling that right now. I was, like, <laughs> and so, uh, so that was actually kind of a surprise. I actually got quite a bit out of some of those conversations you have with the shopkeeper in that game, but a uh, great game. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't gotten to the point where it kind of switches into 16 bit, uh, gameplay yet. I'm looking forward to that, but I'll, I'll keep it that another game. that's also on switch that I've been playing that I am absolutely in love with is lonely mountains downhill. Uh, or I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Lonely mountains downhill. Have you guys heard of this game? No. So it is a mountain biking game where you always start on top of a mountain and then you take a trail down to your base at the, at the, your, your camp at the base of the mountain. And it's kind of this isometric, uh low poly kind of graphic style but it's gorgeous uh and it's just this really really relaxing game that kind of has like 
it's it's almost like um hotline miami style gameplay where it's like you'll you'll fuck up and like fall off your bike and die but then you just immediately respawn at your checkpoint and so it it really encourages you encourages you to like find cool shortcuts and like yeah. take risks I, and stuff like that i actually have heard of this game i you know there's like a series on youtube where like they take developers and they have people uh, them watch people do speed runs of their games yeah ign does that and yeah, uh, yeah. they did this game and they're like holy shit you're not supposed to be able to go over that <laughs> cliff <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like yeah yeah because it's it's not like super you know forgiving like if you if you fall too far or go too fast like you'll fall off your bike pretty easily but it's like you get into the zen flow of the game and it's just the controls are so responsive that like every time you fuck up you know exactly what you did wrong and it's like, okay, well, I, I, I was a little too ballsy there, and now I deserve what I got, right? But the game is just like, it's this great line between like kind of stressful because it's difficult and super relaxing because there, there's no music in the game, and it's all just like nature sounds as you're going down the hill, and it's, it's, it's super fun. I've been having a ton of fun with that game, um, and so I really recommend that to everybody, even if you're not like a big biking guy. Uh, that's one of my favorite games I've played this year, honestly. Uh, and then I've been playing uh, also Descenders is another game that's on Switch. That's another downhill biking game. <laughs> uh, but this one is actually like like third person behind. You know, it's like better graphics. Uh, I haven't played that one as much, but it's just funny. I've been playing a lot of that. Uh, other than that, but playing like 360 games, uh, catching up on, but playing some Mirror's Edge. Uh, I love that game so much. Um you know, uh, like I said, I've been playing like Geometry Wars and then like Peggle Two. Uh, I've been playing quite a Peggle bit. Two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't, I don't care for the farting unicorn in that game, but I do like the gameplay, and it's fun to play with Sasha on that one. Um, David, I did appreciate your post in Discord, which was like, uh, "Next gen is here," and it's uh, it was be- Geometry Wars. Yeah, I think it was, be- I think it was Bejeweled too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Bejeweled. <laughs> Played some of that. So yeah, just catching up on all the Xbox games that I've been missing for the past like six years or so. So I'm having a blast. Matt, um, I've been playing uh, one game, and that was Miles Morales. Nice. Uh, PS4. Uh, I don't hundred percent games but i did it in two days <laughs> wow <laughs> all the uh, side missions and everything all the-, all the side missions all the collectibles man it's such a good game mm. it's just such a joy like i constantly bounce off of open world games except for breath of the wild and spider-man mm. just because moving around in spider-man is such a joy even in the first one it's great in miles morales it's just as good like it's it's so much fun. That's I 100% awesome. it's Spider-Man. I'm on a high, 100% Miles Morales here soon. M- Matt, yeah. you said 2 days, but like does, did you put a lot of time into those 2 days? Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I neglected all of my relationships. <laughs> uh, almost all of them. I just going to stop. It's just so fun and Rob, maybe you'll talk about this too. It is I don't know, it's just such a joyful game and like Miles as a character is also a very relatable character because mm-hmm. he doesn't know what he's doing, he's new. Um and if you're I don't know, this is where I get really wholesome and the older I get, the more close to these characters that I find myself, I'm just like, man, I remember being a teenager <laughs> and feeling left out and didn't know what I was doing either. And then I got all this responsibility given to me for my family and my friends. I and then uh cue in some hip hop <laughs> right 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 yeah it's just my like my life just kidding that's good to hear uh, though that the story is legit and that it's some good character building and stuff because it's like it'd be so easy to just put this game out and the you know the millions of people that bought the original spider-man would just be like oh yeah more levels and more areas to explore or whatever but it seems like they really put a lot of thought into the story Man, there's just there's a there's several cutscenes that also speak to Miles as a character where he's just walking in Harlem and he's just like listening to hip hop with his headphones on. Yeah, uh, and I'm like, man, that's so true to Miles as a character. Um, and it was just this picture in into this story. It was just so good. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. It was it was in that moment it was really hard not to cry just to see <laughs> this is my my liberal yeah. tears <laughs> yeah sure uh having this uh identity be represented in a game and how that speaks to gamers That's true. all across the world it's yeah. just, it it was fucking cool it was a cool moment rob what about you what have you been playing this past week i'm also playing miles morales and will echo 
everything that Matt said about how just wholesome it is, how great it is. Uh, it's super inclusive character wise. Like it's just it, everything about it. I loved Spider-Man for the PS4. I, I did nothing but play that for two weeks when I got it. Mm. Uh, and I've had the same level of joy and enthusiasm for Miles Morales. It's It's been excellent. It's 100% been worth the cost of the <laughs> PS5. Nice. Um, I've also been getting into uh, the Destiny 2 expansion that just came out. Mm. Beyond Light. It's 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 a loot grind. <laughs> it, it is what it is. It either is your thing or it isn't. But just having fun shooting aliens in the head. Uh, and on Switch, I've been back into Pokemon Shield, doing some shiny hunting in the Crown Tundra. Cool. I don't know if y'all played Pokemon at all, but the the Crown Tundra, the stuff that they added in that game is really really neat. That's the newest, that the newest expansion that just came out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you play the other one like, too? I did, but only as a consequence of like this one came out. Right. So I think I I fired up the one on the day it came out and then rode my bike around for like two minutes and got into a battle and was like, okay, cool. And then I put it away for eight months Mm -hmm. and then I played it when this one came out and I was like, oh, this wasn't very good. (laughs) So the first DLC wasn't that great, but the second DLC is really good. So the Crown Tundra is just like a a whole new area to explore. It's like a lot, like it's, it's like a chunkier addition to the game than the first one. Yeah, and the biggest mechanical thing that they added is called uh dynamax adventures Mm. and i don't know how familiar y'all are with the mechanics but y'all can do these dynamax fights where it's just raid style so it's four pokemon fighting against one giant pokemon uh and the dynamax adventures every single one of them ends in a legendary oh cool so you fight four pokemon in a row four dynamax pokemon in a row and then you fight a legendary so you like get the option you rent a team so you don't get to bring your own Pokemon. They bring some for you and then you get to like change out or pick different paths and the people on the internet have no idea what they're doing. (laughs) So you die in really stupid (laughs) ways and get frustrated. And the, the odds for shinies are like way, way better than any other game. Right. Normal odds are one in 4,000 and this one, it's like one in 300. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's well, a lot of fun. It seems. I don't know. You know, I, I'm not going to say that Nintendo is like ma- going to make a Pokemon MMO, but they keep putting little tastes of MMO style gameplay into the Pokemon games. And it seems like they might be inching their way towards that. That would be pretty amazing. That would be dope. Yeah. I'd be all the way into that. Everybody in the world would buy that. <laughs> the, they <Yeah>. should, <laughs> should really just do it already, I think. <laughs> Cool. Uh, if then that does it. Uh, thank you so much, Rob, for coming on and being our chief PS5 correspondent. <laughs> yeah, it's great to have you on, man. Thank you all for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I like getting to consensually talk to people about the PS5 instead of just yeah. battering people with my opinions. <laughs> have you heard the good word about the PS5? <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> It gets you into heaven. Oh, my God. If nothing else gets taken away from this podcast, it's that the PS5 is fucking big. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know if it'll fit in my entertainment center. I don't think it will. Yeah, I don't it know won't. how you get it yeah. through the door. It won't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, you, yeah, never mind. <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> well, thanks, Rob. And, and thanks to Corduroy, who does our music. Uh, if you're looking for me, Patrick, online, I am PDYX. Hey, I'm on Twitter, Matthew, M-A-T-H-Y-O-U. I'm pretty much everywhere on the internet, at Monolith Fiji. And what about you, Rob? Where can people find you? I am on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All of them are Rob T. Builder, all one word. Very good. That's a nice username you got there. Uh, Once again, yes, thank you for joining us, Rob, for this uh, next-gen discussion. Uh, If you'd like to find our show on social media, we are at switch heads on twitter at super switch heads on facebook and instagram uh, we've got a link tree somewhere where you can find all that information uh, also if you'd like to uh, join our uh 
Facebook group. Uh, that's a great thing to do. I would really recommend that. We've got lots of discussion on there every single day. Uh, the community is always popping off, and it's growing by the day uh, in great ways. You can also join our Discord. We'll have a link to both of those in the description below. Uh, highly recommend that uh, if you're looking for some nice human interaction during quarantine. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to this episode. We'll be back next week, uh, probably talking about Age of Calamity, I'd imagine. That's what I said last week, but that's when I thought Age of Calamity was coming out <laughs> last weekend. Uh, we'll be back next week, though, to talk about the game, so make sure you tune into that. I'm very excited to play that game. I'll carve some time out of my Peggle 2 <laughs> gameplay in order to get Age of Calamity in. Uh, folks, we love you very much. Uh, we're spiking hard on COVID, so stay inside, everybody. Try to figure out your holidays in a virtual way. Uh, your parents will thank you for not killing them for you. Uh, we love you very much. Stay inside. Wash your hands. Uh, Biden's president. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>